Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Katie and I'm so happy that you're here. Today we're doing three DIYs in the terrazzo style or terrazzo style. You guys, I even looked up how to say this and I'm still not sure, but I'm gonna go with terrazzo for now. Anyway, we are making three unique decor pieces in the terrazzo style. It is faux, it's not the real thing obviously, but I'm going to show you how you can recreate this look if you like it. I love how it's trendy right now. So I thought, let's make a few cute pieces that we can put around the house, your apartment, wherever. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So to make this candle holder, I'm starting off with a bunch of different colors of clay. And for all of these projects, we're going to be using polymer clay. So my base color is going to be white. So what I'm going to do is just take it out of the package and start to soften it up. It's a little bit tough at first, but once you warm it up in your hands and just sort of roll it out, you can create this round shape with it. Then you can go ahead and set that aside and then take your other colors and start breaking off small pieces and just sort of putting them into random little shapes. So if you look at Trazo patterns, you'll see that none of the shapes are any specific one shape like a square or triangle. There are a bunch of different sort of abstract shapes. So you can do this yourself by just ripping pieces off or you can flatten it out with a rolling pin and then cut out little like triangles, little rectangles, things like that. And just do this with all of your colors. You can use any color pattern you want, as many colors as you want. I'm going to be using this dark blue, a tan color and a pink color. Once I've got all my little pieces cut out then, I took that round shape I made and I just put a little indent in the top to let me know where I'm going to be placing the candle. And then every other spot on it, besides the bottom because you won't see it, I'm taking all of my little shapes and sticking them to the outside of this little ball here. So go ahead and go around the whole thing and cover it up and then you can take some wax paper and then a rolling pin and start to push the little pieces of clay into the round shape. So you don't wanna to push too hard, but you do wanna flatten each side because what we're trying to do is make four flat sides. So I'll show you what I'm doing here. You can see that I've kind of pushed those little pieces into the clay and then I'm gonna put it on the next side and do the same thing so that we're almost creating like a little cube shape with a flat bottom. Then you can go ahead and just make sure that each side is pretty even. So just take a look at it and even it out with a rolling pin as you go. And then I took a taper candle and I stuck it into that indent in the top and sort of twisted it around. I didn't wanna smush the clay too much. So first I twisted it and then I used my fingers to sort of create more of an indent and push out the sides. And then I took the candle again and pushed it in until it fit perfectly and just sort of push the sides up around it to make sure that it'd be nice and tight when it's done. Then you can take the candle out and bake this according to the clay package instructions. When it's cool, it's good to go. For this next one, I really wanted to create my own take on the fringy mirror, which I'm sure you've seen before. So these are the colors that I'm using for the clay. And then I decided to make a little bit of a stencil for myself. So I'm taking this small mirror and a piece of paper, and I'm just making a little mark on each side of the mirror and at the bottom. And then I'm using that to trace the mirror and create a basically a half moon stencil for myself. So once that's all traced, I went ahead and cut it out. And then now I have something that I can use to roll my clay against so that I will know what size clay I need to use and get the shape just right. So I ran out of white clay for this. So I'm using this tan color and I just rolled it out as best as I could. Um, you can make this pretty thin and just try to make it as long as your little half moon stencil that you made is because you're gonna lay your stencil right on top and then use an X-Acto knife or something similar to cut out around that shape so that you have a perfect little half moon shape with your clay. Once that is all done, you can repeat the same process as the first one by rolling out your other colors and cutting out a bunch of tiny little shapes and then just sticking them right onto your little half moon, half circle shape and just scattering them around in any pattern that you want. I again decided to use three different colors here and now I'm going to put the wax paper right back on top and just roll it out again. So make sure that you're pushing from all different angles to make sure that all of the little pieces get pushed right into that bottom piece of clay to really create that terrazzo effect. 
once you're happy with that, you can take off the wax paper and you can see mine got a tiny bit misshapen. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use my fingers to smooth it out and make sure that the edges are pretty even. It's not perfect, but I think it looks pretty good. So I flipped my mirror over while that clay was baking and I actually glued my stencil onto the back because I'm gonna use it as like a little template for myself because I'm gluing all these pieces of yarn down. So I cut a bunch of pieces of yarn all the same length, you can choose any length that you want. But I'm using this stencil to know the starting point for where I need to start gluing them so that they'll all be even. And then I just glued them all the way across the back of the mirror. Then I noticed that they were kind of not straight enough so I took my straightener on a low setting and I just straightened them all and it worked perfectly. And they weren't perfectly even at this point so I gave them a quick trim. And then the last thing I did was put some glue on the back of my baked clay and just stuck it right on the bottom of the mirror and hung it up. <laughs> Lastly, I really wanted to make a cute little ring dish or other trinket holder. So I took two packets of the white clay and rolled it out as big as possible. And then first I took all of these different colors of clay. Again, you know the process by now. Just cut out your little shapes and stick them to the circle. And then take your rolling pin and roll them out. Again, make sure that you are getting them nice and flat and into the base layer of clay. So what I'm gonna do next is take a little ramekin, which is oven safe. And I'm actually going to use that as like a mold for this. So basically I'm flipping my clay over so that the pattern is on the bottom and then I'm just sliding that into my dish and trying to press all the sides so that it's as even as possible. As you can see, it's bigger than my dish. So then what I did was go in with my X-Acto knife and just start to slice off the top to make it even. So I just sliced little sections at a time and then I took my fingers and I smoothed out the top edges after I had cut it. So again, this is not going to be perfect. I'm sure there's a way that you can do it perfectly, but that's just not always me. So I just made it as even as possible. And then I went ahead and flipped the dish over and I traced another piece of clay. I'm using this pink color because I want to make a little lid for the trinket dish. Bake everything, then glue a little bead to the top of the lid, and that's it. 